And Gail, it's all yours. Take it away. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, you all know me. I am Gail Santi. I am the director of the Central Kansas Library System, but I am also the director of the Great Bend Public Library, which is one of the big three libraries here in CKLS. And um, I'm kind of talking to you from both hats today. Uh, when I inherited the, um, the library collection, it was uh, old. Um, and the circulation wasn't as good as it should be for a community this size with as many users we, as we have. And um, so we have done some heavy, heavy weeding. I think in my first year and a half, we weeded 17,000 items. That's more than some of you even have total in your library. Um, and we weeded those items based on a number of criteria, um, which I'm actually gonna start talking about um, in this presentation today. Uh, I hope that I didn't scare anybody off with my email last year. This is kind of like um, collection management 2.0. If you're a new librarian, the better webinar for you to watch is the one on um, weeding to weed or not to weed, I think it was called. Um, this one is going to get a little bit more nitty gritty. We're going to get into some um, ways that you can use information that you put out in your state report to help you analyze whether your collection is meeting its goals. Um, I'm going to show you some tricks in Excel to do the math easy for you because I, um, I'm a liberal arts major and while math is a liberal art, um, I am not a math major <laughs> and I never wanted to be nor did I ever want to pretend to be um, a math major. I have a son who is a math tutor and I don't know how he sprung from my loins and turned into that, but somehow he did. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to get started. We've got a lot of information to cover here. So, and I've got about five different documents I'm going to share with you. So I hope I don't make anybody seasick with the back and forth thing, but let's start out with the, um, the slideshow. And here we go. You should be seeing my slideshow now. Yes. Um, it is a very vanilla slideshow. I didn't even do it in a pretty color or anything like that. Um, that is who I am, and I've already said that, so let's go on. Let me um, present. I hate the big. Can you still see just the slideshow, or do you see the whole uh, Chrome we browser? We see the whole Chrome browser. Okay. I'll have to do it like this then. Okay. So what we're talking about today is collection assessment and analysis. Um, collection analysis is a systematic process for determining the quality of the library collection. Um, when we are entrusted with public tax money, which we are as public libraries, we want to be good stewards of that money. We want to make sure that we're spending the money in the way that it's going to be best used and the way that our community wants us to spend that money. Um, assuming that you've weeded your library, um, this is where you can get down into the nitty gritty. Analyzing your collection and assessing your collection can also help you make some of those really um, difficult weeding decisions. So the Let's, I can't decide what the most important thing is today, but a bigger collection is not a better collection. In Great Bend, we have better circulation now since we have weeded 17,000 items. We may have weeded more since then. A healthy collection weeds itself by more than 3% a year. Um, collections are created to meet the needs of the community. That awesome big fat book that's called the public core nonfiction public core fiction books um, I think those books are probably about 150 bucks a pop now um, we don't even keep those at CKLS on hand anymore because those don't reflect our communities um, again I, I want to say this is the most important thing but I'm going to go on and say the next thing is um, how you are doing collection development and collection management now should be different than how it was done five years ago, 10 years ago, or 20 years ago. It is not the same anymore. 
if you are looking at the New York Times bestseller list to figure out what to buy, you're doing it the hard way. I'm not going to tell you you're doing it the wrong way, but you're doing it the hard way. If you are only weeding books based on condition, you're not keeping your collection relevant and useful to the library users. We're going to talk about two statistics later that are really going to drive that home to you. Um, that is uh, average age and median age. Um, collection analysis provides insight into the age of the collection, the strengths of the collection, and the weaknesses of the collection. I know I say this a lot. I say best practices a lot. But there's a reason. I've been in a lot of different libraries, and I've worked in several, you know, handful of libraries all around the world. A good library is administered according to best practices. Um, analysis of a collection should happen about every five years. Just like with policy should be reviewed and updated every year, you're not going to do the entire collection. You're going to choose a segment of it and you're going to do it systematically. And after you've been through your first time of assessing the collection and analyzing, it's really going to go quickly. When we do an assessment and analysis, we use qualitative data, which is done by an individual or a group. And one of the ways you can do that is by scanning the shelves. We do that a lot. We look for those things that are stinkers or old or broken spines. Um, and then there's quantitative data, which is the number of titles, the age, the circulation. We're actually going to use both of those. A connect collection analysis and assessment provides a roadmap to the future. If you've listened to me in trustee training, you know there are a few things that I say are the trustees' jobs, just a few things. One of them is, is they need to do long-range planning. They need to plan for the future. Now, you might be saying, hold on, Gail. I know that it is not my trustee's job to tell me what, when, or how much to weed, or what, when, and how much to add to the collection. And that is true. That is absolutely right. Um, however, your library board, and ideally in conjunction with you, needs to be forward thinking, future focused, and planning for the future. You need to be able to clarify your library's goals. And that may mean that you need to wiggle the budget more. Um, you may need to uh, somehow find a little more money to put towards DVDs. Or you may realize that it is DVDs that circulate the most at your library, but you're busy still buying a lot of magazines or a lot of print things that aren't moving. You may find that your biggest circulation is by children in the summer and the rest is really slow and low. That means then that you and your board need to align your budget to what is being used by your community. Remember, we purchase items to be used by our local community. That also comes in where the analysis can supply data to help you set your funding priorities. And the analysis can build a base for long range planning and administration. Now, these are all really um, oh, library science sorts of terms, but Hopefully you'll see by the end of this slideshow and after examining these documents what I'm talking about when I mean a roadmap to the future. So often I see collections that reflect the past, where we've been, what happened years ago, what was popular years ago, not what needs, what the community needs now. Kansas has public library standards. The best thing about this slide is that we've got new standards coming out. We've got new standards for 2009, no, 2020 to 2024. Um, unfortunately, most of this information is not being updated. Um, these are the Kansas public library standards as regards your collection. The library spends not less than 12% of the total operating expenditures from all income sources on the purchase of library materials or access to electronic content. 
The library has a continuous ongoing weeding program and a minimum of 3% of the materials in the collection is withdrawn annually. Remember that I said a healthy collection will weed itself by more than 3%. So I've got, I've got a bone to pick with this second point, the second bullet point, and I have since I got here because it's not encouraging you to manage your collection properly. It's encouraging you to let, just let things be as they've always been. We talk about what you add to the collection and that would be um, not less than 4% of your total collection. And that would be um, calculated after you've withdrawn your 3%. And this is an important one, especially all of you small libraries, the li library purchases access to electronic content as part of its collection. For a lot of you, that may be one digital book or ebook a year, but that's going to help you meet the standard. This is so important. The quality of the library's collection is not just measured by how many books you have. It's measured by use, currency, that means what's new, and appropriateness to the community. A quality collection is more than the number of volumes, dollars spent, and number of items weeded. The Kansas Annual Public Library Statistical Survey that you all fill out in January only asks how many volumes do you have? How many have you added? How much have you spent? It's not giving you the information you need to manage your collection. So other states, um, many, many states have standards and bookmarks. Uh, sorry, <laughs> library girl, benchmarks. Um, and they are very comprehensive. Um, I've used for this slideshow, I've used Utah, Texas, and Colorado. And they all measure the collection size relative to the size of your community, your circulation per capita, age of the collect collection, and turnover rate. What is nice about these standards is they, they um, very succinctly show you, they give you a, a rating and say, here's where you are, and here's what you need to improve yourself. You don't just have to mark time, which in the Army means you're just marching in place. You're not getting anywhere. Utah standards, and this is where you'll see they're all different, um, they rate libraries as being in the 10th, 50th, and 70th percentile. One thing I really didn't like about Utah is that no matter what size your population, you have standards to meet that are the same, like collection and turnover rate, age of the collection are the same no matter what size your community. Colorado ranks 25th, 50th, 75th, and 95th percentile. Those standards are actually quite stringent. stringent. Um, I really liked what uh, Texas does, and that is basic, enhanced, and comprehensive. Unlike Utah, Texas and Colorado do offer standards for smaller communities. Texas has a category for population of less than 5,000, and Colorado has a category for population 990 and below. Um, Utah, Texas, and Colorado, in their standards, rate um, the uh, state statistics against the national statistics. So you've got a lot of information that you can use if you're interested in this. But one of the important things is that you've got to have a standards checklist. Kansas doesn't have that. Um, CKLS doesn't have that. We have it for our own collections, books by mail and rotating books. But you've got to have this and you can certainly adopt this standards here. I've made it into a handy dandy um, checklist document that I'll show you at the end of this, but it has to give you a roadmap. Where are we now? What are we working on? And where do we want to be? You'll see that a lot of these things you are already doing. Um, hopefully your collection development plan is based on your community. It has to include selection criteria, collection specialties like do you have a, um, a local history collection or a genealogy collection or a cake pan collection. 
because you can't just say, okay, we're collecting cake pans and that's it. You've also got to have in there um, priorities. Are we going to spend any money on this? Are we going to, um, what are we going to do when they're no longer in use? You've got to have how you're going to deselect those items or read it. And you've got to have requests for reconsideration. Your collection needs to reflect the entire population in your community. Um, it can't just be the people that look like you and me. It can't be the people who go to church with me. It can't be the people who just like to read um, cozy mysteries or um, adventure books or westerns. You need to serve everyone. This should sound familiar. 12% of the budget is spent on the collection. The library purchases a variety of formats for the collection, including digital content. The library's collection includes access to all these different formats. Because you're in Kansas, you get to check this one off automatically because Kansas provides these things through the state library, through the, um, the general fund, and through support from systems. However, just having them isn't good enough. Are you promoting these items to your patrons so that they know they've got them? Um, the collection is up to date and has been reviewed and assessed within the past three years. So see here, I've used three years. In the other slide, I used five years. It's up to you to decide how often this needs to be done. If you're working 10 hours a week, it might be 10 years, but it should be done. The collection is weeded by 3% annually. Interlibrary loan services are offered without charge. That's another one we all get to check off. The library promotes the Kansas Library card services to the public. Most of us do collect local history materials, but do you have a collection management policy on your local history materials? Does your policy say what we're going to collect and what the scope of that is? When I started to weed the Great Bend collection, we had things from Virginia, um, Texas, um, Maine, the Carolinas, uh, we decided that our local history collection is first Great Bend, second our county, and third whatever is within our regional library system. We no longer have books from hither and yon because that's not what our community uses. And the library has a ref core set of reference materials. And for us in Kansas, those are those online databases that are so awesome. So we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. We're gonna look at several sets of statistic and we're gonna, statistics and we're gonna run them through some simple math formulas. Excel will do the heavy lifting and it's gonna give us a set of data that we can work with. This last sentence is real key here. Always assess special collections separately. If we threw our local history materials in with the rest of our nonfiction, when we were assessing our collection, the age of our collection would be abysmal. Some of those local history materials are from the 1800s. So if you try to average that out, it's gonna be terrible. And these are the things we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at collection size per capita, circulation per capita, collection age, and turnover rate. Okay, the collection size per capita is nothing more than how many items you have and how many people are in your community. And I just used whatever was reported on the state statistical survey. So it's the number of print items you have divided by your population. Remember, special collections, you assess a little bit differently. If you needed to assess, like if you're a big library like Salina, you need to make sure that you've got enough digital items. So your collection size per capita, again, would be the number of digital volumes divided by the legal service area. Here's the math, and these are those standards. These are the Texas standards tweaked a little bit for Kansas. So, if you've got a population less than 5,000, it says you should have, if you wanna be a basic library, there's nothing special about you at all. You just, you're a basic library. You should have 17,000 items or 3.36 items per capita, whichever is greater. 
If you want to be an enhanced library, that means you're doing a great job. You should call me and have me come to your board and tell them how awesome you are, and I'll be glad to do it. You're going to have 7.42 items per capita. But look at this table again here, because the bigger your community, actually, the fewer items you need statistically. Remember, look here at less than 5,000, you need 3.36. If you're over 25,000, you need 1.95 items per capita. Quick question for you, Gail. Um, yes. So you say that um, 17,000 items or 3.6 items per capita, whichever is greater, if you're less than 5,000, would, wouldn't 17,000 always be the higher number? Or Not necessarily. It depends okay. on if you've weeded or uh, your school library closed down and you added everything in. Okay. Um, a bunch of different things here. Um, and remember, I said you're going to need your own set of standards and your own checklist. Okay. These, if you've got a little small library and you're following this standard, for 17,000 items and you don't have room, you don't. So you set your own standard there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We look at collection per capita to help us find some um, interesting things here. It can, it can, well, you would use it to relate the number of items you lend out to the number of people the library serves. You, can um, use this to look at your annual circulation divided by your population, and that's going to indicate the average number of loans you make to each community member. You can use that second bullet in a very interesting way at your end of year on your um, library uh, receipts. You can say, um, if you, here's how many books our community checked out, here's the average age. Uh, here's the average cost of a book. Here's how much money your library saved the community. Um, now, when you look at these numbers, a lower circulation per capita can be a couple of things. This can be a result of lower materials expenditure and volumes held per capita. It is also likely to lead to more interlibrary loans. Now, the last two bullets are particularly key to my library because we had and unfortunately still have a lower materials expenditure. In my checklist, that's in the, we're working on this column. Um, we also had too many volumes per capita and so we had a lower circulation per capita. If you're doing a lot of interlibrary loans and it's for basic sorts of materials, you need to take a look at your collection because for whatever reason, it's not meeting your community's needs. Circulation per capita is the circulation divided by your population. So here again, kind of, in, um, I've tweaked the Texas a little bit, um, less than 5,000 to be a basic, this is the basic library category, um, you want to be circulating 4.07 per person. That's you're going to be your percentage rate, actually. Now, how that kind of balances out is you've got homeschoolers in your community that when they come in, they check out 20 items per family member. And then you've got the people who never come into the library. It sort of balances itself out. You can see here in the enhanced column, it is significantly higher in all instances than the basic column. What this says is it's not just how many books your community is checking out, but they like what they're finding in your library. Now, when we look at collection age, this is where it gets a little more difficult. Everything, I did a lot of research for this, and every single thing I read showed and pointed to the fact that what people head to first is the new stuff in your library. Older materials are going to sit on your shelves and gather dust. If your copy of Little House on the Prairie is falling apart because it's been used so well, and you're looking for a good used copy on Amazon, 
you better make sure that that copy you're buying has current cover art because if you buy an older copy it's probably just going to sit there it's not going to get used um, with teens this is particularly important and with children's materials you want to think teens items should be no older than three years old on the shelf if you've got old stuff your teens aren't going to read it and with your children's items you should think high-end boutique when People go in and they look at your children's collection. They should feel like they're walking into a very expensive children's boutique. It should be that nice. So when we look at the age of the collection, we're going to look at a bunch of different things. We're going to look at when the item was published, when you added it to the catalog, because if you're adding a lot of donations to the catalog, those publication dates could be quite old. We're going to look at the average age of the collection, and the median age of the collection. And again, we're going to assess any special collection separate. We're going to assess our reference materials that don't circulate and our um, local history collections separate from the rest of the collection. So when we look at average and median, there's a difference. And we're going to come back to this in a different way. We're actually going to do the work. Um, the average collection looks at the publication years on a whole. So if I have 10 books and they range in publication date, it looks at the average year in those books. The median age is similar, but it indicates an overall, it, it can indicate an overall age of the collection, but it gives us a better idea on the distribution of that range. Um, and we'll come back to that. So we're gonna look at Excel. And then we're going to help figure out how to calculate average and mean. So here we go. Let me stop sharing that. Um, I'm going to come over here and see if I have anything to talk about. It's not that one. There it is. Okay. That's the one I'm going to share now. Um, I'm going to find that. Share. Age of collection. Here we go. Share. Okay. Okay. Yep, Here we can we see go. the spreadsheet. Okay. This is not really even a spreadsheet. It's just some numbers on the table um, on this on this on these little boxes here. It's very basic and very simple. Okay. When you I've got two sets of data. Let me find this so I can read it to you. Circulation. Collection age. Okay. And let me pull this over here. I want to make sure I get this right. Okay. Um, remember that we're going to look at certain things. We're going to look at the year that it was published um, first when we figure out the age of the collection. So I've got two very small sets of information here. Just, just a few books. Look at the publication dates in this first column and you can see they're really new. This actually was pulled from rotating books. And I sent a message to said, hey, we need to look at these titles from 2000 because that doesn't meet our criteria. Well, it turns out they were large print westerns. This column on the right, I sort of manipulated it. You can see I've got here a date from 1959, 87, 77, and 98. This actually is a list of really new books for most of our libraries. So the average age for this column is 2000. Two was the publication date average. The median or the average age for the publication date for this number of uh, on the right is 1994. Now the median age for both are the same and I thought that was kind of interesting. You're never going to be working with 12 books at a time. You're probably going to be working with hundreds or thousands of books at a time and that's going to give you a much more drastic range in media. So to figure out the average, let's make sure I do this right, I highlight this bunch of numbers, click on formula, over here on auto sum there's a down arrow and I can click average and there it tells me it's 2002. I'll do the same on this one so you can see me again. I highlight the numbers on auto, can you see my cursor? Good. Yes you can. Okay, on AutoSum, you're going to click on this down arrow here, and you're going to click on Average. And the average age here is 1994. 
That's the publication average. That's because we've got those older titles we threw in here. Now, to pick out median, it's different. Okay, I need to make sure I do this right. I'm gonna use the insert function button. Average and median are up at the top because I've used them recently. You might have to scroll through to find median. Or you can search for it in that search yes. bar. Um, you're gonna click on median and you're gonna insert the function. Now, you can see down here, it is, I'm pointing with my hand. <laughs> It is um, showing you column and cell C2 through C12, which is what I wanted it to show me. And down here in tiny is where it shows me my result. The median age is 2001. So while the average age is 1994, the median age is 2001. And I'm done with that. So I can take that out. Now I wanna do this for this information here. and it didn't work. Do you see, because I highlighted it first. Oh, and it's really telling me it's wrong. Well, now I'm all, all trouble. I'm just gonna do it again. Control Z it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I thought you heard me thumping here. Oh. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Now I don't know what I did the last time. There we go. Mm. Maybe I'm not doing this. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Your cursor needs to be in the right cell or it doesn't work. That's the problem. Um, okay, so when I talk about the percentage of the population, it's really the collection. So averages is a piece of cake. We have a report in our version of Koha right now that'll show you the average age of the collection. But that's not enough information. It really isn't. You need more information. So anyway, this spreadsheet is part of the, the deal so you can um, see what you have to do and what you can work it out. Um, and the instructions on how to do average is here and the instruction on how to do median is here. To figure out using your same list here, and this should be circulation, not population, but it's the pop percentage of the collection that is less than five years old, you can use this really cool tool at percentagecalculator.net. And I typed in plain English, what is 20% of 12? And it told me that 2% of all of these books are less than five years old. That's the column on the right. That's pretty sad. If I go in and I delete 1959, the percentage less than five years old increases dramatically. So really be thinking about those older titles that you've got. Um, okay, I closed that. All right, um, let me look. Right now I don't have the best report in the world, but it's working and um, we're gonna get there. So with collection age, let's come back here and share that with this one. Share and present. You should see the slideshow again. Okay. Yes, yes, we can okay. see the slideshow. With your collection age, on the bottom of that little spreadsheet, it shows you how to calculate that. Um, and that's where I drew the 20% from. The Texas standards say, no matter what size library you are, 20% of your collection should be less than five years old. You are not a warehouse. Most of you are not depository libraries. And most of your patrons want what's new in your library. Please don't think your shelves have to be full. And if that's the only reason that you're keeping old things, give me a call and I'll visit with you about it. 20% um, of your collection is less than five years old. Okay, the next thing we look at is turnover rate. And this actually shows what's being used and how often. Um, 
Turnover rate measures the activity of the overall collection, indicating the number of times each unit book would have circulated during the year if the circulation was spread evenly across the collection. This is important and it correlates with your goals in the community. If your vision or your mission statement or vision statement is to provide popular materials, um, you're gonna have a much higher, you should have a much higher turnover rate. The rotating books um, kind of mission, and we're kind of rewriting that, but we're just co um, shoring it up. It's we collect current and popular materials in a variety of formats. At one time, that was still the um, official mission statement, but our turnover rate and our age of collection were not in a, um, congruence with what we were stating. This indicates how often each item in the collection was lent and it measures the relevance of your collection. Is what's in your collection important to your community? So you use this figure, the collection turnover rate, and you compare it with volumes per capita, which are inputs and outputs, such as circulation per capita and interlibrary loans per 1,000. So your collection turnover rate, again, is circulation divided by the number of physical materials you have. And again, we've got your basic percentile, and then we've got your enhanced percentile broken down by community size. The last step, the last set of important data is input, and it is human driven. It is essential. It never replaces, no, it is never replaced by weeding by the report or statistical reports or things like that. It's highly subjective um, because it's human driven, and it's really difficult if you are the one purchasing and you see things that are sitting on the shelves that have never moved. If you have more than one person in the library or more than one department in the library like Salina, I would recommend that different departments do this for each other. This is what CKLS does when we do a weeding. We, we quickly scan and then we know what needs to come off. Working in a team makes it easier. Shelf scanning is done after the statistical data has been collected. The data complements what you're seeing in the stacks. When you objectively scan, you don't need to take every item off the shelf and you don't need to touch every item. But you do need to put yourself <clears throat> in the shoes of your community, of your library patrons. What do they see? What's the condition of the collection? Is it inviting? Are the covers old? Are they ugly? Is it dusty? Deliberately and objectively doing shelf scanning in conjunction with statistics is the best type of information you can get for an analysis. And I think that's the last one of that. Good. Let me stop sharing that and come back here. And what time is it? 208. Okay, good. I don't need to show, well, yeah, I'll show you this real quick. Um, I've got a lot of information for you here, and um, I'm just gonna show some of the things to it very quickly. So you should be seeing the collection standards checklist right now. Yes. This is something very simple. It aligns with the Kansas Public Library standards um, and uh, promoting your collection. It encourages collecting local history materials, but the first thing on the item is that collection development plan, including collection specialties, which a local history collection is. It encourages you to weed your library by a minimum of 3%. It talks about um, you offer interlibrary loan. And then it goes down here and there's just a real handy dandy spot where you can pop in your numbers. The, I lie, the collection has X number of items. Um, you have X number of items per capita. How is the collection used by the community? Circulation per capita, collection turnover rate. The library maintains a collection, a current collection. The percentage of the collection less than five years old is, and you put those numbers in here. 
Here you've got achieved. So a lot of us can cross off, yes, we've done that. We're starting out at a point of success. Nobody is going to fail every single item. Then we can decide as staff, as administrator, and as the board, which one of these standards we need to beef up. Which one do we want to work on? Especially if you're a 10-hour librarian, you don't take on all of these at once. And even if you're a big library, um, like Hayes, you don't take them all on at the same time. So which ones have we achieved? Which ones are we working on? And that column on the right, what haven't we even started? Be honest with yourself. You know what your starting point is. Okay, let me close that. Now I'm gonna share something interesting here. And that is this one. And I have this spreadsheet here. I have highlighted my own library, Great Bend Public Library. My poor staff, they're always the, the guinea pig. It's like the parents always use their own children as examples. This comes from, <clears throat> excuse me, I need a drink. Kale, while you're taking a drink, mm -hmm. um, we did have a question if yes. the checklist will be in the handouts. And I, I want to let everybody know that the handouts that you're showing, all the examples, will be in the handouts folder um, after the webinar when I post it on the email. They're not Absolutely. in there yet, but they will be. Absolutely, yes. And this is, this is a good time for me to say, I'm going to unfocus, unshare. Where is that? I don't know. I've lost it. That's okay. Um, it's a good time for me to say, if you know that you're ready for um, collection management 2.0 and you'd like for me to come and help you work through this material, I'm going to be available to do that next year. I can easily spend a couple of hours with you and we can come up with some statistics. This spreadsheet that I'm sharing you with you right now actually has done some of the data for you, which is what I'm tickled about. So you can see that this information comes from the basic. Um, statistical survey that every library fills out every January. I've weeded out a lot of different columns because we're just looking at collection. We're not really looking at anything else right now. We've got the list of libraries for all of Central Kansas. Column B is your population area. Remember how often we used per capita and that's why population is important. C is, excuse me, the number of registered patrons. And that's what helps us figure out um, circulation per capita or um, circulation per registered patrons. D is the books that you owned at the beginning of the year. E is the books you added during the year. F is the number of books you withdrew or deleted during the year. So G is your total print materials. Then we have H is your total audio. And I is your total video. That's your DVDs. Um, what we don't have here are um, your digital content. If um, you've purchased items for Sunflower eLibrary or um, if you've got your own collection there. And, and some of our libraries do. Those electronic collections, those digital collections, need to be analyzed and assessed every bit as much as a uh, print collection. Okay, remember the yellow is great then. So we've got our total number of video and we've got our total number of items at the end of 2018. Remember that we weeded a lot. Our physical item circulation for 2018 was 75,492. So what I've got with this spreadsheet, and, and um, it's as part of your documents, you can actually see what your circulation per capita is, what your collection size, here's your circulation per capita, what your collection size per capita is, let me make it a little bigger for you because I've got a huge, and what your turnover rate is. We're going to come back to collection age. Okay, so let me come to my... Let's see, collection age we don't have. So, boo, 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 boo. Okay, circulation per capita. Great Bend has just a little over 15,000 people. Um, and I'm gonna come all the way over. Woo, sorry, don't mean to make anybody seasick. Okay, 
we're going to look here. Circulation per capita for my size community in my basic level should be 3.12%. Circulation per capita. So I'm doing better than that here at Great Bend. But the, because the basic, and I'm looking at that other standard, the basic circulation per capita that puts me at 50th percentile, a solid C, is 3.12%. What puts me at a solid B or higher at 75%. Patty, is that right? 75% would be a B? Okay. Would be 5.25%. So you can see here that we're only at 4.92% for our circulation per capita. It could be a number of reasons. It could be we're not spending enough, which I already know we're not. And it could be that we're not marketing ourselves enough. That is something of the past, we're improving. So our collection size per capita is the number of volumes total divided by the legal service area, our population. For my community, 50th percent is 2.12 items per capita. Now we're at 3.68 per capita. We were this is a number that higher is not necessarily better. We were close, whoops, sorry, no, don't do anything. We were close to 15 items per capita, but none of them were moving, and so they needed to go. But we're back up to 3.68. Um, if we wanted to consider ourselves an enhanced library, we would be need to be up to 5.25. So there's some work to do there. But remember, more is not necessarily better. We don't just want to um, get every grant we can and buy things willy-nilly. We need to buy the right things. Collection age, we don't have anything on this spreadsheet for. But we do on the turnover rate. Remember, the turnover rate is circulation divided by the total number of physical materials. For a community our size, our collection turnover rate should be 0.94. And you can see that ours is 0.75. We do not rate a C on our turnover rate. Um, we are getting there. We're much closer, but we're not there yet. And for us to be an enhanced level or a B grade library or above, we need to be at 1.42. So we're not there yet. So the reason that I share these things is it shows that um, you have to look at a bunch of different things. We weeded a lot. All of these statistics are very heavily influenced by the fact that we do not spend 12% of our total income on our collection. Um, we're getting that number higher, but it had been as low as 5%, and that really shows in our statistics here. If I hadn't have known that, I would think that things were abysmal. Um, what I do know now is that we're targeting our population on what we're purchasing, and um, it really helps us uh, know what to buy when it's time to buy it. Let me make that smaller, there we go, okay. Um, so if you'd like, and I don't have any picture of anybody right now, I put that away, um, I can run a different library's numbers. Um, are there any volunteers out there right now? <laughs> Phillipsburg is okay. volunteering. Let's do it. Let's rock this. Let me put that over there so we don't see it. Okay. Phillipsburg. Here we go. And I'm going to make your color pretty so I can see it. There we go. No. Will we be able to review that? Yes. Okay. So this is the population that is coming from the state report. That's filled in. That, and Kelly, I know that you and I have been confused about population before. All of these numbers came from the state report. Okay, a population of 2,512 people, so that's definitely in the 5,000 or less category. They have 1,570 patrons. If all of those are active patrons, you are really doing a phenomenal job. 
What I suspect is there might be some patrons who are expired there or some patrons who are perhaps in the catalog because they still have um, fines or they have overdue materials even though they've left the community. That's one of the reasons that we work on cleaning up the patron database is because it helps our statistics look better in the long run. Um, at the beginning of 2018, you owned, I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger so I don't have to scroll, there we go. Um, 16,881 items, you added 12,032 items, you withdrew 812, that was probably right at your 3%, and I know it was 812 because the year before that, Phillipsburg was also weeded very heavily. Um, your total print materials at the end of the year were 17,302. It talks about your audio and video here, and your total number of items at the end of 2018 was 17,600. So when we look, your circulation total was 17,994. So it would be awesome, it would be just awesome if of your total 17,600 items, every single one of them had circulated, but that's often not the case. Okay, if we look at circulation per capita, you're doing great. You've got a 7.16, so I'm, gonna, I'm opening up my other thing, circulation per capita back up here, there we go. For community less than 1,000, the basic puts you at the 50th percentile is 4.07. At the enhanced, no, yes, yes, yes. At the enhanced, which is 75th percentile, you are 7.42. So you are almost there. That is, that is amazing. Okay, so we look at your collection size per capita is 7.01. In a community less than 5,000, remember it's 17,000 items or 3.36 per capita, which is ever greater, whichever is greater, that's the 50th percent. And the 75th percentile is 7.42. So you're doing much better here. And I think that when you're the biggest library in a county, your goal should definitely be to be aiming for that 75th percentile. Your turnover rate is 0.98. We know that your collection age would be kind of in the sweet spot because a lot of the older items were weeded. So your turnover rate, no, I'm not there. There we go, is 0.98%. Awesome, okay, for a community of your size, the 50th percentile, the basic category is 0.57. And for an enhanced, which is the 75th percentile, that is 0 0.83. So you can see, Kelly, where that heavy weeding helped make a big difference in your statistics. I suspect you are circulating a little bit more this year than last year and last year more than the year before. That often happens when there's a new librarian and things change up. But now you know you have room for growth and you know exactly where you need to grow. And you've got the roadmap to know how to do it. So you can take this information to your board on your, um, your basic statistics, how many things you've got, how many total circulated, how many card holders you have. You can let them know what the circulation per capita, collection size per capita, and turnover rate are. You can show them that you're doing great, but you could even do better. That's the goal of the analysis and the assessment. I think I have time for one more library, if anybody's interested. Um, Lacrosse Barnard also um, okay. volunteered. Hey, awesome. This is interesting stuff. I'm not, not that kind of nerd, but it really is interesting <laughs> when you get to it. Okay, obviously Lacrosse is a smaller community <clears throat> with a smaller number of registered users. Their total print materials at the end of 2018 were 13,338. Bernie has also weeded recently and weeded the nonfiction heavily, if I remember correctly. Their total items at the end of 2018 were 14,830. Their total physical 
item circulation was 8,319. Let's look at the circulation per capita is 6.12, so I have to come back up here, circulation per capita. Um, okay, the 50th percentile, the basic category rating is 4.07. So you are at 6.12. The 75th percentile is 7.42. So you see now where, where you've got some growth opportunity. Your collection size per capita is um, 10.91. That basic category so 17,000 items or 3.36 items, whichever is greater. That's the basic. The enhanced is 7.42. So it may be, Bernie, that you need to look at weeding your collection more. It may be that you're, when we get into collection age, you're wanna, gonna wanna look at those older materials that really aren't circulating or you're gonna to wanna to look and make sure that we are not here using, we're adding in those things like local history here. Your turnover rate is 1.78. And here we go. The turnover rate for less than 5,000 population for 50th percentile is 0.57. For enhanced, it is 0 0.83. So your enhanced is your circulation turnover rate is doing really well. Um, what I want to show you a little bit about with collection age, and I haven't finalized that yet. I am I am waiting. Okay, I've stopped sharing, and you see my pretty face now, right? Okay, good. Um, bloop bloop. I don't remember what I'm talking about collection age before we finish up. I'm still waiting to find the perfect report. As it is right now, um, we've got a couple of reports in inventory. I'm still testing them, taking things out and adding things in. I don't want you to have to manipulate that spreadsheet um, too much. What is Ramey saying? I can hardly wait to see this for Sylvan, I'll bet. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. That was a flashy thing in my face. Okay, reports. So right now, and you can test it for your library, but you're gonna to have to manipulate this spreadsheet a lot. Um, right now, under inventory lists in saved reports, I'm working on Gale test two. Test one was a stinker. I deleted it because it didn't work. So you're gonna choose your library system. According to those standards, remember, how old do we want our collection to be? That's what dates you're going to set. And you can see here this, I'm pointing this report. I'm going to show you in just a minute here, and I'll share it now. Um, it's this one, and share it. You should be able to see my browser here? Yes, we can. Okay. This report here, you're going to have to decide those dates. You can see that I need to tweak it because I've got two things pulling the same information. Because it's CKLS, we don't put older materials out. So I added 2000 because that makes difference with those Westerns. So I run the report and I don't need to do that because I've already done it over here because that can take time sometimes when you get a big, big report. So I, no, I do need to run it. Okay. So remember this was um, things with a publication date older than 2014 and with a copyright date older than 2000. And you can see here that that's a pretty small um, picture, but because it's CKLS, we have to look at that call number. We've got, most all of them are youth services and things like that. Well, certainly bulletin boards with color for crayons aren't gonna have a copyright date and they're not gonna date out. So if I go back and I change it to a different library, Barnard, and I set the same standards, and I'm gonna give you a 1995 copyright date. And I'm gonna keep it at 2014 because we look at that percentage of the collection that is older than 5%. You're doing pretty good. You can see here that you've got some things that are newer that haven't served, but that happens. And some of them 
like this one from 2018, that's a magazine. So, you know, that might be a little bit different. Let's go back and let's change this copyright date to 2000 and see where we get. Do, 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 do. It's spinning. We get, nope, sorry. Wrong library. We went back to CK for you. <laughs> I did. Um, you can see that you've got a few things here. Um, how you can, oh, I'm out of time. Um, I'm going to have to uh, do a quick video or I'm going to have to do a tutorial or something like that and send it out on how I'm working to figure out the um, collection age. And so far, this report isn't even doing it for me. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and you can see me again. Um, that's the only, the only uh, hiccup in this business right now is that age of collection. And to me, that's such a crucial thing. If I have to, I'm going to go ahead and do a regular super weeder and I'll show you how to manipulate that. I'll make it very clear and I'll put that with the other materials so that you can do that. It would be an enormous spreadsheet um, with everybody's library on it. Uh, with the results, I would add it to that big spreadsheet there, but we can also then um, show you how to go in and manipulate the spreadsheet from the report from your um, integrated library system, if it's uh, Pathfinder Central or if it's Kohar, whatever it is. Do we have any more questions before we go? So, while Mary Beth's looking for questions, it's important for you to know that um, in, in this, um, this presentation. This is not for those libraries that are beginning. Um, this is for a library who's already done a heavy weed and now you can really analyze your collection. Um, at no point in time do I want you to think that I am telling you exactly what you have to do and what the standards are you have to meet. The only standards you have to meet right now are the Kansas Public Library standards because those the system has adopted as well. It's up to you to establish standards of a higher caliber for your community. And when you look at the documents, you'll see that you've got that 50th, 50th percentile or that 75th percentile. They even have a 90th percentile. I just didn't include it here. I thought 75th, that's enough to work for now. Um, so anyway, I'm over time. I've talked a lot. I've thrown a lot of stuff at you. I've given you a very bland, bland um, slideshow. But if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Um, if you want to discuss the information with me, or if you want to discuss it on the Google group, either are perfect. I think the more people who know about this, um, the better. It really does help you focus on the future where you want to be and it gives you tools for laying the groundwork and it helps you set that roadmap to the future. And I want to thank you for spending your hour with me. Um, I appreciate it. I see names that I don't normally see and that's awesome. And um, I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Thank you, Gail. Bye. Um, bye. I will make sure this is posted by the end, um, end of the week. Thank you very much. Thank have a good you. evening. Bye, everyone.